I want to thank everybody for coming, and uh, we have we have lots of people on there. We only have a few uh, video camera spaces, but we have lots and lots of little groupings around and large groupings around. So welcome all. I want to welcome a special guest tonight, um, most special guest to me, um, my father, who's on tonight, uh, who I love very much. Um, thank you, Dad, and welcome. Uh, although I think you picked a very poor show to see because I'm only going to talk about one product. And I can be a lot more long-winded, as you know, if I have lots of things to talk about. So my dad's probably going to be surprised that I'm only talking for a certain amount of time because he knows how, how long-winded I can be. Um, so anyways, I wanted, to, I wanted to thank him for getting on. So we're going to talk about noggin health. Now, I call this memory formula. I call it brain formula and we call it noggin formula. See, I call everything in the lab whatever it is. So if it's for the brain, I call it for the brain. If I'm thinking memory, I'm thinking memory formula. And let me tell you a little history about this product. It's a fascinating product. I developed it 30 years ago. Uh, I was in my second year in college and I was found to be dyslexic. And I was pulled out of a couple classes because, uh, for doing certain things um, that they thought was uh, interesting. And so they tested me and they found certain results and then I got further testing. I found out when I told my father about this that he actually got pulled out in his university and had IQ tests and all kinds of stuff done on him as well. Uh, it's kind of funny because you feel like a lab we're at for a week with a bunch of mirrored windows and you're doing IQ tests the whole time. Um, but what they find in that, in those IQ tests, they also find that you're dyslexic. Uh, nothing to feel bad about because Einstein was dyslexic and lots of great people have been dyslexic. I think there's a gift associated with dyslexia that you get benefits of. And there's also some things that make it harder for you to learn certain things. Um, so what I did is what any good person would do uh, with capabilities is I created a product to reverse my dyslexia. Can you guys hear me? I hear people shaking their heads. They either don't like dyslexia or they... See, he hates dyslexia. You can tell that guy hates lisdexia. Uh, maybe he's dyslexic or lisdexic. See, if I say lisdexia, then he thinks, oh, yeah, now I know what he's talking about. Um, so... When you look at that, my brother's also dyslexic, and he's highly intelligent as well, and so you're going, well, there's nothing wrong with that. So I created a formula, and what I found by taking the product was I tripled my reading speed in three months. Is that a good thing? Would anybody like to have their reading speed tripled in three months and your retention? And I remember being on a date and we were going to make cookies. And I had a cookie recipe that I had made healthy. Um, yes, you can make healthy cookies. And so we were on a date and she said, what was the other ingredient for that um, as we were buying all the stuff for the, for the, pro, for the uh, cookies? And I just recited the recipe verbatim because I could just read it because I could see it. She's like, all right, enough's enough. That uh, you have, sometimes you can have that. So that was only on six pills a day, which is what I took at that time period when I was in college to reverse dyslexia. And you can have wonderful results. I had lots and lots and lots of people that had fantastic results, including my attorney um, who told me he had photographic memory sometimes on it. Well, I told him I had photogenic memory on it, and so he thought that was pretty good too. Um, hopefully somebody caught that joke. But, uh, and I did have somebody write in and she writes and she says, I didn't think you were very funny until I started taking your noggin formula. Now I think you're really funny. So I don't know if that helps. If anybody else wants to take the product, then come back and watch me and we'll see if I'm funnier. Um, I don't think so. Anyway, so that's what I did. And, and the number I gave everybody was about six pills. I'd say, well, you know, this is how much I take. So this is how much, you know, you could probably take and, and do it. And I had lots of people having wonderful results of being able to do better in school, having better memorization skills. Uh, some people didn't drop out of school when they, were, when they dropped out before. And they would take my product and they could finish their college education. So I had awesome, awesome results. In fact, I had one kid... Um, who called me, he called me uh, crying, and he said, I'm failing. I'm last in my class. And 
I've always been told I was stupid. And which makes you want to throttle whoever told me is stupid, right? Um, if it was a teacher or it was a parent, shame on them. So I told this, this kid, I think he was 18 years old, I said, I'll send you two bottles a month of this product as long as you stay in school. He said, okay, I'll do it. So I said, try it. It should take about two weeks for you to notice the effect. In two weeks, he called me back saying, I went from last in my class to number one in my class in two weeks. He goes, not only that, they've asked me to come back and help tutor the next section of kids going through. I said, do you feel stupid anymore? He goes, no, not for the first time in my life. Now, is that worth the product in itself? In itself, is that worth, and we can end right now, Noggin Health fixed me, helped my brain with dyslexia, and it helped this kid. And that in itself, it's worth it. Anybody that wants their kids to get better grades, anybody that wants to have better memory, anybody that wants their brain to work better. Right? Okay. I think that's fantastic. We can just end right now. No? Oh, Stan says, no, I can't. I have to keep talking. Okay. Sorry, Stan. Um, so what happened next is very interesting because I got hit in a car accident. She hit me at 75 miles an hour. They're estimating her speed because she didn't hit her brakes. I was at a dead stop. For another accident in front of us on the road and I had brain damage for a year and a half and my doctor who's still a friend of mine um, said that they had a drool his wife actually told reported to me that they had a drool rag for me that they would put on my chest because I would drool on myself and I stuttered and slurred and, and I didn't remember a lot of things and I don't remember much in that time period so my wife at the time started giving me 16 of the noggin. At that time, it just had a white label. It was blank, kind of looked like this, and it just had on the bottom of it mind formula on the bottom because it was just my personal use, so I didn't waste a label on myself, and it was in cases in my garage. So she brought it and she goes, geez, it can't hurt because the doctors are starting to give up on him because they thought he was going to get better at one year in one year, and it's a year and a half, and he's not getting better. So she was scared because she's going to have this big six foot four guy that she has to haul around and, and wipe drool up on it and probably puree my food and, and feed me bananas. But she didn't want to do that. So she started giving me 16 of my own brain formula called noggin. Um, and in two weeks, I started talking. In six weeks, I was on the radio show again. I was scared. Trust me, I was scared to get on the radio show because I wasn't remembering words as well. I wasn't connecting definitions with words. So I would, we would play a game in the kitchen. And she'd say, can I get you something to eat? I said, yes. What can I get you? And it would be whatever I was craving. So at this one time that I remember very well, I said, um, I want a... And then I went blank, which happened all the time. Just a big blank hole in the end of your sentence. Is that scary? Because you can't communicate. You don't know what the word is. You know what it is, but you can't get it. So I would circle the word, meaning I would say it was yellow. It was tropical. You peel it. It's sweet. She goes, a banana? I said, yes, a banana. So then I had the connection. I knew what a banana was. I knew the word. So we do this all the time. It worked really well until you get into the bigger words that I knew and she didn't know. Um, and that caused problems. But then you have to relearn things. So you reread books that you've already read and you redo everything that way and you restudy. Um, all well and good that my brain damage, which I thought eight and six years ago was fixed. But like even Stan will say, and what I notice is I'm much, much, much smarter now than I even was four years ago. Um, that recuperation that I'm, I'm remembering most everything much, much better. Okay, so do you know anybody that's been hit in the head too much? Anybody that's got brain damage? What would this do to your life, to your family, to their family, to your loved ones or somebody you barely know to get their brain back? How about a boxer or a fighter that's been hit too much? How about somebody that's just been smashed in the head like me? Yeah, it messed up my vision in my one eye. And, and did other things. Uh, I've got five herniated discs from it. Um, don't worry, I made a 
disk formula and it's regenerating my disks. Um, see, so you can just be at ease. Um, that's what you do. Now, the more brain formula I take, the more formulas I get to make, right? So we get to help more things. So what we found was is that 16 brain formula is what she gave me, or noggin formula is what she gave me. 16. That was a lot more than the six, which is what I took before. I said, why did you give me 16? And she said, that's what I felt like I should give you. I said, see, there's a, there's a, a series of things that you go through. Um, documentation trumps conversation, correct? And inspiration trumps documentation because there is no documentation. When you're doing something to be the first, there is no more documentation. There's just inspiration. And it's a good thing. My wife gave me 16 brain fills. It's a dang good thing. And you know what? I'm so scared of it. I don't not take them every day. I take 16, 16 to 20. What we found was the maximum effectiveness is between 6 and 20. Any more than 20 doesn't really do any more benefit. Although I had my son, when he went to nationals for competing in motocross, um, he took 25. Now, why he took 25, I don't know. Maybe he was listening to the other part of it and saying, I just felt like that's how many I should take. Or maybe he was just staff paranoid of being at, at, a, at a competition like that and took 25. And most people would think 25 probably was pretty spicy on your stomach. And he came second in nationals on that race and almost beat a kid that uh, he beat him by, he lost by half a tire, but he led the race for all three laps at nationals his first time and led the race to a kid that's won eight years straight. Now, you might not think that's impressive, but he got sponsored by a motorcycle company because of it, and everybody told me how much faster he was than normal. So athletics, we found, have a benefit. Now, the other reason I know that 20 is a good number for us to take is because when my brother um, collapsed in Norway, uh, probably just overworking himself because he's a hard worker, is that they wouldn't let him out of the company, uh, the country, for two weeks because he collapsed. And then when he got well enough, he came to the States. And the first thing he did is he called me and he said, I'm scared I'm going to die. I need to come see you. So I said, okay. And he goes, I'll come see you for three days. I said, no, you'll come see me for eight days. And so he came to the house and we did a bunch of stuff and I put him on the noggin formula. And it's funny because when my brother first showed up, it was the first time I saw my brother with doll eyes and he just wasn't himself. And if you've ever seen somebody change from the vibrant person you know to somebody that's a little bit more dull, it's sad. And within that eight-day period, my brother had his sense of humor back. And he had his brain back. He still takes 20 a day. And I think sometimes he takes 21 if he thinks I'm taking 20 just because he wants to be, you know, the older brother and, and take more than me. You know, it's kind of like in the family photos. He always stands on his tippy toes to try to be taller. You know, he tries to do that. If you've ever had boys in your house, you know exactly what I'm talking. Girls probably don't do that, but boys, we do. Um, so any of those family photos you see of me on Facebook and my brother looks taller, you know he's cheating. He's cheating. So 20 pills helped him. And he even told me a few months later, he goes, I love this stuff. I cannot live without it. It makes my brain so much better. Well, here's the thing. Um, that's all well and good. But what is it really doing? I could look at, uh, well, let me tell you a funnier part of it. My wife, when she would do research for my products for me, uh, she'd say, you know, nobody will ever duplicate your formulas the way you do. If they looked on your label and tried to duplicate it, they'd never do it. Why is that, I say? She said, because there is no information on some of the herbs that you have and some of your formulas for what they do. And this noggin formula is case in point. You'll never find anything on it. Is it supposed to be in there? Yes, it is. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be as good or not nearly as good in some cases, depending on what herb you want to take out. So I think that's great because they'll take out herbs that they don't know what to do, let them duplicate, and they won't have a good formula. They won't have a formula in itself because they wouldn't know how to make it. Because if you put one ingredient that should be a primary, and because of cost, you make it a, uh, a, a very minor part of that formula, you just change the whole way that the formula thinks. You changed everything. 
Because, see, you can neutralize negative effects. In fact, some herbs neutralize themselves in some negative effects, except for when you do an extract. If you do an extract or you want to take out certain parts of an herb, you muck it up. You don't do it right. You don't know how to build an herb, don't take an herb apart. So, if you keep an herb together, instead of doing it in an extract form, which you will only get what you can liquid extract from it, just from water, alcohol, and if you keep it together so it goes through the digestive tract, you will get everything and it seems to have a self-balancing effect. But when you put it together with all the other stuff, then it can be used to either temper another herb or temper an organ or help in other ways. So as you do this, the process becomes, well, it's better than the sum total of its parts, right? So what are we really doing though? What are the benefits? Why does my brother keep getting better and better the longer he takes the product? Why is my brain getting better and better the longer I take the product? It wasn't just an on and off switch and that's it, you maximized it. It has benefits residual. And I love that. Because this lady that wrote this letter is going to think I'm even funnier next year. See? See that lady on the end, she didn't laugh at all. So she needs to take more noggin. Wearing the blue shirt, has blonde hair. Yeah, you know who you are. Um, so, I hate to pull somebody out of the crowd, but you know, if they're going to be over there not laughing at these jokes, I'm going to have to pull them right out. I suggest you even fake laugh if you have to. Um, I got the microphone. All right, so what are we really doing? Well, this is in, sorry, Dad, because I don't get to talk about other products. You really should come back next week when I get to talk about a bunch of products. Um, the other products help support this. As you always know, I, I say you should not take anything without taking the one, the greens product, so that you get every nutrient. So that way, noggin can do its job. And you should also be on the colon product so the toxins can leave your body faster. Because here's the thing. This formula is going into the brain and cleaning brain tissue. It's increasing circulation to the brain. Is that a good thing? Increasing blood circulation, anything is good because then it heals, doesn't it? Blood is what heals. Now, blood heals better if it has higher oxygenation, doesn't it? Right. So we're oxygenating the brain. We're cleaning things because we know people have problems from our diets. Remember my theory or my belief. It is this. I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. It's really easy. Stop taking bad things into your body. One. Stop. You don't go get a Coca-Cola and French fries and think you're going to get healthier. Okay? Stop. If you have health issues, stop. Stop eating bad things. Stop sneaking bad things. Yes, nobody will catch you, but your body catches you. Stop. So, first principle, stop taking bad things into your body. Nothing inorganic should enter this body. Do not exchange poison for poison. Do not take in heavy metals. Okay? Nothing. Two, get the toxins to leave the body faster, hence the colon formula. Three, take every nutrient ordained for this body, and the body will do wondrous, miraculous, millions of cellular functions every second. Does that seem pretty easy? And does that seem understandable? Now, you got to remember, I'm not going to talk in a way that makes me sound really smart. That would be hard for me to do anyways. Um, I'm not going to do that because I think that's arrogant. And if you're arrogant, you can't truly help somebody. You're only helping yourself, right? I'm trying to help myself by bolstering myself. If I was truly confident, I wouldn't have to do that. What I want is I want you to understand what we're doing. I want you to understand the simplicity of this. Yes, is it complicated? Of course it is. Everything is. But if I explain it to you in an understandable manner, then you will embrace it easier. And you will be able to describe it to your loved ones. Am I right? So I'm going to try to tell you things in an easy, understandable way. Like if you're a car mechanic, I will tell you things like a car mechanic understands. If you're a school teacher, I'll tell you like a school teacher. And that way... I don't seem arrogant, and I'm not, and you understand me. In communication, it's just not me talking, it's you understanding. 
you understanding what I'm trying to say is us communicating. If you don't understand, it's not communication anymore. It's just me talking. And I can talk and we can use big words and they can write me this whole thing and make me sound so smart. You go, wow, that guy's really smart. I didn't understand anything he said. Do you want to use the products? Well, it sounds really great, but I don't know what it is. But if I tell you that you possibly have palladium or, or mercury or aluminum or whatever gets into people's brains and their cells, and we have a product that helps to increase circulation, and through that circulation, bad things can be put into the bowels that go out through the exit the way it's supposed to go, and then you flush them, you understand that that makes sense. You say, yeah, that makes sense. I believe that is what the colon's for. And I believe if I did have better blood flow, I could get rid of bad things. And yeah, I agree. I've had bad things and I've eaten bad things and I've stuck bad things and I've eaten candy bars when my mom said not to. And my wife tells me I can't have deep fried french fries and I go and sneak them off every time she's working late. Because I know people that do it. And if you have hydrogenated oil, then you plug up the chief cells in your stomach and you cannot process vitamin B6. And when you can't process vitamin B6, all kinds of things go to B6, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to tell you without B6, you can't have B12 and because we're talking about the brain. If you don't have B12, you got big problems with the brain and with oxygenation. So that's just from one thing, and that's hydrogenated oil. Therefore, from now on, you cannot have deep fried foods. We clear? I mean, that's easy, right? Because we want to be smart people. And... Do you really think that that's going to help you? Let's love ourselves. The easiest way to always ask a mom how she wants to take care of herself if she's not taking care of herself is ask the mother, what do you want your daughter to have? Oh, well, I, uh, I, uh, I don't want her to have the same thing as I'm doing. Right. So let's treat ourselves the way we'd have others. Okay. Does that make sense? No hydrogenated oil. Here's the thing. We talk about ADD all the time. ADHD. We talk about Alzheimer's. We talk about autistics. We talk about dyslexics. Uh, DD, uh, what is that one? It's uh, uh, EDS. Uh, I had a nice letter written to a lady that I'll have to respond to maybe some other time or stand or respond to her because I'm not going to get into your doctor's prescriptions. Do I think you can fix everything? Well... I think I've seen everything fix. I do believe that there's nothing impossible in this world, and I do believe if there's impossible, if there's a word impossible in your dictionary, you should remove it. Because I don't believe that word should exist. It's only in our brain. If you think you can and you can see it, you can achieve it. There's been nothing created like what we have. Therefore, we've created it out of what? Nothing? No. It's like our solar system. Did it create out of nothing? No, of course not. We have great stuff. It's doing amazing things. But I want to talk to you about nutritional stuff before I talk to you about other great stories. If you want to fix problems, you have to fix the issue. I always tell people, you are the total summation of your own problems. Whether you know it consciously or subconsciously or whatever it is, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not blaming you. Don't get mad at yourself. Don't get mad at your parents. Just make a change and go from this day onward. I'm going to give you a list of things to take out of the diet. There's a bigger list that I take out of my diet, but I don't want to be controversial. No hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oil. These are all things dealing with the brain, okay? This is the naturopathics geld and the nutritionist geld have found 98 point something percent of ADHD and ADD goes away in two weeks by taking these six things out of the diet. Would you be willing to take those six things out of your diet? I'm not even talking about noggin. I'm talking, of course you need to add noggin. But I'm just talking about what they say. I found 100%. But I always put everybody on noggin as well. So I can't say that my 100% would be the same as their 98%. No food coloring. No MSG. Monosodium glutamate goes through like 13 different ingredients lists. 
I'm going to add to it no GMOs, okay? Um, they take dairy products out of it, but I think there's multiple reasons for that. Um, I could get into those reasons. I'm not going to. If you really want to know them, call the office, um, and somebody might be able to answer that question, or I'll answer it for them. Um, peanut butter they take out as a food allergy. They take it out for a couple weeks because they don't know who's allergic to it. They add it back in if they can. The people that are allergic to peanut butter, it's severe to peanuts. Okay, um, I would also suggest all shellfish. And these are permanent deletions. If your meat is not organic, it is being impregnated with MSG and food coloring. See, because meat's not supposed to be red. Just so you know, when it drains and it's dead, it's gray. Um, they impregnate our carcasses with um, food coloring and MSG, so it's more flavorful for you, and they don't have to put it on the label. That MSG and that food coloring causes you problems. A lot of times the cheeses that you eat are cured in MSG solution, which they just call a sodium solution instead of a um, what used to be a brine solution. Um, so these are problematic to people that are having these issues. Uh, food coloring is one of the worst things, so anything with that, I know this is going to take some things out of your life. Eat to live, don't live to eat. Does that make sense? Nothing inorganic should enter this body. That's Hippocrates. Or I was thinking the immortal words of Socrates who said, I drank what? Oh, sorry. A uh, little gallus humor to break up the tremendous pressure. Okay, let's go back to Hippocrates. Um... These are, at least, see, they've been taking noggin. They get this. Um, if you take out these food allergies, oh, and processed sugar, that's white sugar. That's anything except for, like, dehydrated cane juice. Dehydrated cane juice or evaporated cane juice or evaporated cane crystals. That's just the cane evaporated in the sun without being heated over 111 degrees and it evaporates into crystals that have all the nutrients so that you can assimilate them. Does that make sense? Because if not, it's a thief. When it's white sugar or any synthetic sugar, it's a thief. I found if I go to a Mexican restaurant and I do not order it without cheese, and I happen to get their yellow cheese, which yellow is a food coloring on there, and then that yellow cheese typically is the cheese that has been cured in MSG, then I get a headache and I'm brain damaged for like two, three hours, and I just hand somebody else the keys and say, you drive me home. Because seriously, I'm, you know, and, and your eyes are spinning counterclockwise and stuff. I've had other people tell me that when they go and they get the same kind of cheese that they get migraines. And I thought that was fascinating that this person has gotten down to that point of I get migraines every single time and she actually got it down to the restaurant she was getting it from. I found that to be fascinating. So I'm just trying to give you a little bit of help. It has nothing to do with noggin health. It's just nutrition. And... I mean, I have other beliefs. I don't think you should have any white flour. I think it needs to be in a whole grain. So if it's, it's not white rice, it's brown rice. It's not processed in any way. Anytime it's white. So you say, well, how about fructose? Is your fructose white? Yeah. Do you think fructose, when, did they get that from oranges or beets? Or where did they get that from? Were those beets and oranges, are they white? Because I have never seen a white orange before. In fact, I've never seen a white fruit. I've seen snowberries, and they're not white. And I would imagine that snowberries would be white. So when you get fructose and it's white, they process it just like the cane sugar. There's no difference. You don't have any nutrients on it to process it. Does that make sense? If it's an alcohol sugar and it's white, pure white, it's been cleaned. That's the, the problem is we're stealing nutrients and your brain scavenges. See, your brain needs lots of calories. It needs energy. Now, the first two, if you're hypoglycemic, so you know that honey and grape sugar are the only immediate uh, glucoses, okay? But what I say about that is you don't want your honey to be amber and heated 
And if they say, yeah, it's raw honey, meaning it hasn't been pasteurized, but it's liquid and it crystallizes if it ages, it's been heated. The only raw honey is creamy. And it's not creamed honey, it's creamy on its own out of the hive. And it usually solidifies when it gets down to a lower temperature within about a month. I'm just talking because I brought up honey. Okay, So I'm just telling you, if you take those things out of your diet, it will be quite helpful for you to be smarter. Now, once you do that, you're going to notice a difference. If you don't do this, you're not going to notice a difference, just so you know. You can think about it and say, well, that sounds like a great idea. When I want to be smarter, I'll do that. Very well. If you want your child to get better grades, and I don't know if there's any parents here that have children and they want their kids to get better grades. I don't know if you want your college kids to get better grades or to maybe graduate or to maybe get better on a test. Let me give you a couple examples. There was a gentleman who failed his entrance exam to medical school. Um, he, his wife was my babysitter. So I said, would your husband be interested in trying a product? Yeah, he has no problem with that. Okay. So I said, you need to take this much. He said he half-heartedly did it, and he aced his exam, and he got into medical school. Failure to passing. That's fantastic. You think, well, that's, that's nice. That's great. Maybe he just got better on his second test. No, he already took it to the maximum amount. He had to wait six months to take another test. So, because he, he, he failed it a couple times. Um, so we're not exaggerating. There's a test that you have to take when you're in the medical industry. And you have to take it like every three years or something. And it's a very difficult test. And they have to study for three to six months usually. So there's this person, and, and she had not studied. And... She said, oh my gosh, I only have three days to go and I have to take this test or I can't practice medicine. I gave her some noggin health and she took it. She took six. I think she took six. Um, the next story, she took six. Remind me of that. Um, I should have taken more noggin. Did I take noggin today? I can't remember. So you have to remember to take it. So she takes her test and aces it for the first time with only three days of study instead of three to six months on noggin. Would anybody like that? Would you feel more confident? Does your brain have more ability than you understand? If you had photographic memory, would you think you were brilliant? My attorney did, and he wasn't that good of an attorney. Um... But, I, but he could remember, you know, all the lovely things that he probably didn't bring up in court. So then there was another person, and this is the last, this is the latest one. I love this story because um, I was watching this person go through it. She had to take um, an exam that most medical doctors only get 50% right on, okay? But they have to take it every three to four years. And she is in charge of the uh, intensive care ICU level of the hospital. High acuity. Okay? The people that are on their deathbeds. Very dangerous all the time. Somebody's always doing it. It's emergency all the time. Okay? So it's a lot of pressure for this person. And they are 12-hour shifts. And she typically ends up working a lot of overtime because you get called in. So she had no time. She had worked um, 24 hours overtime um, and plus her regular 40 hours in this week. And she had, there was some mess up with her exam the last time. They told her when the exam was. She showed up late because she had an emergency at the hospital. So they rescheduled her for the last time the test was going to be given for that amount of time. So she's panicking. And she calls me that night at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I love that. Um, so she calls me at 2 o'clock in the morning, sounding like she's crying. I didn't ask her if she's crying, because if you ask them they're crying, then they're going to really cry, and I can't, you know, I, what am I going to do? Sorry, you're crying, but I can't help you. I was sleeping. Um, so it sounded like she was kind of crying. She goes, look, I was on the computer. I have to pass a series of tests so I can get to the main test, so I can study the main test to pass it tomorrow. I should be studying for three months on this thing. 
and I haven't studied at all. I, she goes, and now it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm exhausted. Do you have anything I could do? I said, yes. Um, so I told her two things to do. I'll tell you one of them. I said, don't, don't do it. You know, she goes, I'm going to go to bed. I'm, I'm exhausted. I have to get up tomorrow and take the test. I can probably get four hours of sleep. Very well. When you get up tomorrow, remember that noggin formula that I gave you before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to take six, minimum of six, because I know this person never takes very much, because medical practitioners never like taking a lot. It's one pill, maybe two, and they're scared to death. This is not a drug. These are herbs. I could chew on them in the forest. You know, I'll be like Bugs Bunny on this thistle stuff, except for I don't like thistle. Thistle gets in your teeth. Um, but you can, you know, you could, you could eat it. The thing is, she did listen, and she did both things I told her to do. And she took the six pills. Only six. Remember, that's my minimum. That's not her minimum. Her minimum's like one, and and she because she's a medical practitioner, she thinks that's a lot. I'm like, these are herbs. You could take up to twenty. Oh no, I could never take twenty. Okay, whatever. Take six. Just please listen to me. Okay, you're asking for my opinion. You woke my butt up. Please listen to me. So she gets done with the test. She finds out. Now everybody else has studied for three to six months, right? All the other practitioners have studied a lot. Most people have only got about 50 to 43% right on this test. She got 84. The highest was one person. She was second highest in the testing. He got 86. He admitted he studied for over three months. Is that impressive to anybody besides me? She was impressed on six pills. That's my minimum. I thought it was brilliant. I was like, oh my gosh. Now, let me ask you a question. I don't think she's on this call, so we'll mock her. Um, why wouldn't you take six a day every day for your whole life then? You know what I mean? I would. I do. Because wouldn't you be smarter in six months from now and a year from now and then pretty soon... She can just take that test anytime. Because see what I just proved is your brain knows so much more than what you even have an idea. The, the second person I told you about the testing, that person told me that they were answering questions that they never studied and they got them right. Your brain picks up on so much information you have no idea how much you know. They say we use 5 to 10% of our brain. What would happen if you used 11 what would happen if I got you from 5 to 10, 5 to 8? The difference in IQ levels between retarded children and normal is like uh, 8 or 11 points. That's it. If this can increase your IQ level by 25 points, what would that do for all the retarded, mentally retarded children out there? What would that do? Does anybody care? If you are the parent, because that's the only person that's going to care, or the teacher, would you want that child to try that? Let me give it to you in something more emotional because nobody, nobody talks about mental retarded anymore because nobody thinks that they can fix it. How about Alzheimer's? You know my dosage is six. I had a family who was so wonderful, they were actually taking care of their grandmother. She was in the house. I would walk into the house because uh, the parents were friends of mine. And she was just sitting there in the chair in a, in a wheelchair with she just didn't recognize anything and you've seen people like that when you go into the old folks home they don't recognize anything they just probably the way I looked after my car accident just and that's what I had people tell me that you just psh, you're blank and so they said do you think that that would help grandma I said yeah absolutely I mean let you know see what happens and so you know some of the other people in the family have been taking the products so they added it to her diet, and they took it. In two weeks, she was flirty with me when I came in. Hi, handsome. And she was playing the piano, and she remembered everybody's name, and she was chatting up everybody. Would you like to have your grandma back until she passes away? 
You're not going to stop her from dying at some point because death is inevitable. Do I think you can lengthen people's lives? Absolutely. Would I like to go back in time and be able to lengthen all my families? Uh, of course I would. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I would love to go back and have my grandfather live longer so I could be around him. I would love to be able to give my father enough products so that he could live an extra 10 years and be around me and my children and, and give us not just be around, but be around intelligently so you can hear their stories. So you can gather and glean their information and stories of your genealogy. You need to know who you are. And it's priceless. See, in our countries, we don't value the older people. We don't value their wisdom. I used to ask my kids this because they're three years apart. I said, how much smarter than your younger brother are you than you? Oh, yeah, I'm much, much smarter because I'm older. I said, yeah, because you're three years old. How much smarter are you than last year? Oh, I am so much smarter than last year. Then how much smarter am I? Mm -hmm. You might want to listen to your parents. If they're 30 years older than you, how much more have they gone through? Now, if your parents are idiots, don't listen to them. You can tell that by what they're doing. You know, you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe my dad just did that again and my mom just, ah. If they're doing that, don't duplicate stupidity, okay? And you might not be able to fix people that are doing stupid things. And there's a high majority of people doing stupid things because you'll be shocked at what people do. But as an intelligent person, look for wisdom, okay? Watch for peacefulness. People that are peaceful typically have more wisdom. Okay, so let's, let's look at this. Would we like to have them be more beneficial? Absolutely. This lady was bright and intelligent for the rest of the time before she passed away. Was that worth it for them to be able to have conversations with this? Absolutely. Is that a blessing? Absolutely it is. Alzheimer's, it's an amazing thing to watch it be some timers and then go to no timers. We have people, and they're watching tonight, and we actually invited one of them. Um, we were going to have them talk, but there's no real good way to do that with me being in the United States and them being in Australia or wherever he is in some island somewhere surrounded by sharks and poisonous things. Um, and this gentleman has a autistic child, and he started putting him on noggin. And the story, if you read it the way he wrote it, you'll cry every single time. But it wasn't just him that recognized it. It was the person in the restaurant that recognized it. His school teacher recognized it. He gets along with his sister now. He says she's, he's no longer autistic. But I thought that you can't fix autism. Well, I don't know. He seems to think that you can, and several other people with autistic children seem to think that there's something you can do about it. I think that's awesome, and I encourage them to continue in their direction of, of helping their children. What I do recommend against is, please, autistic children have a craving for bad things. Soda pop. Abs, oh, that's one of those six that I didn't list. See, I should have taken more brain pills. Um, Soda pop, out, it's gone. One, it steals oxygen from your blood. Do you want to steal oxygen from your blood? We already talked about that oxygenation in the blood is going to help you, so no soda pop, period, end of subject. And all the food coloring they put in there, synthetic sugars, corn syrup, which is always GMO, and all these other problematic ingredients that they put in there. Then they put a stimulant of caffeine which carries the bad things to you faster. See, I can put a stimulant in an herbal formula and carry good things to you. In Ayurvedic medicine, in Indian food, like Hindu food, that you can put a stimulant and actually get the nutrients to go to the bloodstream 25% faster by adding what they add is black pepper or cayenne pepper or different pepper pots. 25% faster and more nutrients into the blood. Is that a good thing? Would you like 25% more horsepower into your car just for being smart? Would you? 
You would pay for it at the car dealership. Would you like 25% more gas mileage? That could be like 10 miles per gallon. Just for being wise. Would you like you to get 25% more gas mileage? Because if you get 25% more nutrients, I think mathematically that's more of an increase than 25%. But um, if you did that, would that mean that you get to eat less and have more nutrients from it? Yeah. So that'd be less bulk in your bowels and you'd have less big tummy pooch and you'd have better bowel movements? Yes. Okay. Well, that's fascinating, isn't it? Just for one stimulant in your food. Now, I do that with herbs. I put a stimulant in there. I put a carrier in there. If I can't, I put a thinking herb. That's 25% increase of the whole benefit of the, of the formulation. Is that worth it? So when you have an autistic or a grandmother, don't give her any of that bad stuff, please. Don't take her out and give her French fries. Don't give them anything hydrogenated. Get the food coloring out. Get the soda pop out. Get the cheese and dairy products out. Get anything that has the MSG. Uh, and, and I'm not trying to be fanatical here. I'm trying to help somebody that has a severe issue. I'm pointing you in a direction of wisdom. I can't talk as frank as I'd like to. Because if Josh is being frank, then who's frank being? And so if you're going to be healthy and you want to help somebody with severity in their issues, and a lot of you are just going, well, I don't have that many problems, you'd be surprised at how much healthier you can be. If we can get more oxygenation to your blood, is that going to help you have more energy? Yeah. Are you going to heal faster? Yeah. You're going to get sick less? Yeah. Because no problems ever have issues with oxygenation. Oxygenation fixes a lot of stuff. But if you go out and you give an autistic or an Alzheimer's or a dyslexic one of these things, you're going to have an adverse side effect. And it's going to be a dump of the problem. We're talking about you're paying money for a, a product. Don't do things that are going to counterproductive the product. One of the reasons you cannot eat food with the products is you could mess up the product. Let's say the formula has a high amount of stimulation to get it into the bloodstream or whatever counterproductive herbs we have that are doing different things and you add a food to it that has something bad in it. Could you increase your absorption of something bad? Yes, you could. Do you want to? You should not want to. I hope you don't want to. That's why we don't eat within one hour on either side. Okay? It's just the way it is. I usually give a singular juice that you can have. Orange juice is usually best if you're taking the greens just because it counters bitterness. Um, but any pure, pure juice is okay. Okay? Singular, pure juice. People say, well, hi, yeah, I can't put this with a smoothie. Right. You can't take this with a smoothie. This formula is very, very, very exact and precise. Please, don't mess with it. So we have autistics not being autistic. We have Alzheimer's not being Alzheimer's. We have, and it's okay to age, but you'd like to keep your brain with you. Keep your intelligence. How would you like to be young and be vivacious and be able to remember things better? There's a lot of things that this benefit. We have people, um, professional tennis players, kickboxers, I have golfers, all these people tell me that when they're on the noggin, it helps them in competition and in their... I have, I have a doctor in California that's training his son because he was an Olympic athlete for the 100 meter. He's training his son to be a 100 meter sprinter for the Olympics. Has told me he took two tenths of a second off his 100 meter. You know how much that is on the 100 meter? That is a huge cut by reaction speed, by the brain being more efficient. And he's probably getting more oxygenation, okay? These are amazing, amazing, amazing tools. Is there other things that you need to take? Yeah, absolutely. Do I think you should take um, omega-3s? Absolutely. I would take it in, in a vegetation sor vegetarian source, meaning like lecithin. I wouldn't take it in fish fatties. I don't like the way they process fish fatties. It's only my personal opinion. If you don't like to and you like the fish fats, you take them. I don't care. I will never produce them. 
I will only produce my omega-3 formula. And when that comes out at some point, then you can, you can try it if you like it. Um, if you don't like it, that's okay. So only a fool takes offense where offense is not intended. And a bigger fool takes offense where offense is intended. Okay. So I don't take offense and it doesn't matter to me. We love people and we try to help people. That's the best we can do. And I do believe that the best we can do is, is help everybody we care about and love. Now, do you want to force it down their throat? No. It's not the right way to do things. Do I think that you'll be smarter by taking this stuff? Everybody has proven to me that that is the case. Everybody has told me how much quicker their brain is and their, their retention. Is that a good thing for all of us? Yeah, I think we're dumbed down. I think we should all be smarter. Will you be in a better mood? Yeah, I think you would be. Can you help some of these really tough projects? Yeah. If I was a school teacher, I'd want everybody to be on it. Now, how much would you give a grade school child? Well, it wouldn't be the same as a college kid, that's for sure, right? So I can't diagnose that. I can't tell you how much each child should take. I'm only telling you so that you understand the stories behind it. I have leagues of stuff that I'll put on the website of each ingredient and a little bit of a breakdown of each ingredient. You won't find a lot of supportive stuff for some of the ingredients. I'm sorry, it's not in books. You will find some supportive stuff, like uh, ginkgo biloba. It's like a thousand-year-old tree. It's great for the brain. Ginseng, great for the brain. They have all kinds of testing that they've done uh, that, that helps with these. So you've got blue vervain in it, and you've got goat cola in it, and you've got blessed thistle in it. Some of these have nothing to say about the brain. Trust me, they need to be in there. Okay? Um, ginkgo biloba, there's, there's cayenne pepper, which is a great stimulant, but it also increases circulation. Uh, there's, there's ginseng and ginger. Ginger in itself helps the brain. And then you have the Chinese club moss. Now there's club moss and then there's Chinese club moss. See, and club moss is cheaper than Chinese club moss, but it's the hooperzine that is the effective, well, part of the effectiveness. I never believe in breaking an herb down into its little singular units. I know they do that and everybody likes to because then they feel really smart. I don't believe that we know very much as humans. I just don't. We don't really create anything. We have a lot of stuff on this earth and we just learn to use it and that's the best we can do. This product is an awesome product if anybody wants to try it. If you go, well, I don't think that would work. Try me. Try it. Try it for a couple months and see if you're smarter. My brother said in two weeks he knew a huge difference. Most people will notice a huge difference. Please at least take the minimum uh, of six. It's, it's kind of silly not to if you're an adult. Um, and you'll get better grades, you'll do better on tests, or maybe you just want to be smarter. I don't know. Maybe you feel like you've gotten foggy, and it could be. There are a lot of heavy metals that causes problems in the brain uh, that we're taking in. Some of it's in our water, some of it's been injected into us, some of it's in our food, some of it's, you know, it's in our atmosphere. We have a lot of contaminants that we never had before. And this is an aid to get it out. But it's not going to get out unless your bowels are working well. Okay. So we know these heavy metals are bad for us. So we want to try to avoid them. I've tried to give you a few good tidbits on foods to avoid or by principle things to avoid. Um, if you don't like them and you're offended by them, I'm sorry. No offense was intended. Um, I'm just telling you what I've studied. And if that makes sense to you, hallelujah. If you have people that you can introduce this to and they don't like it, I'm sorry. It's one of the things that has to go on in life is that uh, the people closest to us don't listen to us the most sometimes. The big family crab basket. And it's a sad truth. Um, break out of the crab basket. Don't worry about them. Do the right thing anyways. If, if you get something, once you get it, don't let go of it. Okay? You can do a lot more than what anybody will let you believe that you can do. I promise you, you can. I always used to say, 
If you tell me you can't, I will prove you wrong. I will prove that you can. And I know we can do things because, see, nobody's ever come up with a lot of the stuff that we have. And nobody's ever done a lot of the things that we do. And they really work because we care. And our principles of manufacturing and the principles of creating these things are just and true. And they're fair. And they're to be the best they can be every single time without fail, without cost. I don't care what things cost. I only want it to be the best it can be. I want this to be the strongest it can be so we can help the most amount of people. And sometimes you just have this much of a chance to talk to somebody or get that in to help them. Um, and sometimes you're too late. So I always look for the opportunity. Do the best you can. And if you do that, you can't be wrong. You said, I tried. I did my best. So we have the tools. I'm just talking about one particular tool. I hope this was helpful a little bit for you. Um, it's probably one of the worst formulas for me to have to talk about because there's very little uh, in the formula that I can discuss because I'm not going to disclose why certain ingredients are in there when nobody else knows. Does that make sense? Um, I love them. I love what they've done for me, for my brother, uh, for my loved ones, and for the people we've seen, and for the teary-eyed blessings of the letters that we've received that have helped so many people, and just in a singular father, having his son not be autistic, even for a moment, is wonderful, let alone to be able to go out and enjoy him, and have the family enjoy him, and have public enjoy him, and people recognize it, notice the difference, just that one person's worth it. Just one person. I am so blessed to even have this formula that was on hand so that my brain damage could be fixed. I am grateful for that. I am grateful for the help I've been able to do for that doctor that sat there and watched me drool all over myself who now loves it. And, you know, and, and watch how we've been able to help his kids. So it's a chain of events and it just keeps going down and we spread out and we help more people all the time. That's what I'm here for. I am very grateful for all of you that feel the same thing I feel and that we're doing a work and that we need to help as many people as possible. Um, I am so grateful for you. Thank you so much for my whole heart. Um, I love you all and I'm very grateful for all the efforts you're putting in and I will continue to make the absolute best I can make, the best in the world, to help you and your family and loved ones and I promise you that. And we will just keep going, and you will be surprised at some of the great things coming your way.